to federal politics. And this week, the minor party was the major story. Senator Lydia Thorpe. I've told Greens, Adam Bant and the Senate President that I am resigning from the Greens to sit on the Senate crossbench. Greens MPs, members and supporters have told me they want to support The Voice. This is at odds with the community of activists who are saying treaty before voice. My focus now is to grow and amplify the black sovereign movement in this country. Thorpe's departure for the crossbench is a big slap in the face for the Greens. She was hand-delivered her seat in 2020 by the party when she filled the vacancy left by former leader Richard Di Natale. Still on the Greens ticket, she retained her seat following last year's election, which means, you guessed it, that the Greens have no hope of reacquiring that seat for at least another five years. As Seven's Mark Riley succinctly put it, Sworn in with a black power fist today, giving the Greens the middle finger. It's also a headache for the government. To push contentious bills through the Senate, they'll need the Greens plus two crossbenchers. And what does this mean for Adam Bant's leadership? Well, as Nine's David Crow stated, it is hugely damaging to Adam Bant, who led the party to a strong result last May, and now looks like a leader who cannot keep his party together. How many Greens members will leave with Lydia? Much of the media coverage was more of the same. Senator Thorpe leaves the Greens with an enormous amount of respect. And enormous controversy. Her association with outlaw bikies, contradiction of party positions are now desertion, taking with her a six-year term, one on a Greens ticket, leaving Mr Bant appearing a shadow of a leader. But uh, Lydia Thorpe's been public in her objection to The Voice for a long time. Doesn't it reflect badly on your leadership that it took you so long to resolve? Do you think Senator Thorpe should have resigned from the parliament? Look, she's made her decision. But I ask, come on, Adam Bant, do you think she should have freed that seat up so that you could bring in a Green senator? Look, she's, she's made her decision and I obviously, my preference was that she remained in the Greens. Don't you also feel frustrated and angry that you've lost a Senate seat? Look, the reality is she's made the decision. Why didn't you demand the Senate seat for the Greens? It's, it's, it's a decision for her and but I guess you have to you ask her it? that question. But no, 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 that's a question about your leadership. Although it tends the project, I'm not sure Walid Ali had given this serious thought. What a bombshell that was from Lydia Thorpe right. today. What do you think this Just means for the Greens? For the Greens? I think it'll suit the Greens, yeah. actually. Does it look like, though, the Greens can't keep its party together? No, because I think it became really clear over time that the Greens were moving in a different direction from her. And, as usual, The Guardian's Amy Ramikas had to make it all about identity politics, tweeting, the idea that any white person has any right to tell Indigenous people what they should or should not be doing, thinking or supporting politically or otherwise is just another example of how we collectively don't get it and apparently never will. And I can't help but think about this interview with Richard Di Natale on ABC Melbourne, which said a lot more about the interviewer and the wider ABC than it did the subject. We're talking about Lydia Thorpe's dramatic decision yesterday. I've got to start by saying we probably wouldn't be in this mess if you hadn't retired in the first place, so it's really on your well, shoulders, point, isn't it? She took your seat. Been made to me. <laughs> that point has been made to me uh, a couple of times already. Well, Nick, moving away from the political ramifications, um, how do you rate the media's coverage of this issue? Well, I, you can see which side they're on, as usual. <laughs> I, there is a real... Uh, divide in the Greens here between, you know, the more intellectual, radical uh, Greens who dominate the party room in Canberra and rank-and-file Green voters, many of whom actually are strangely a little less, a little bit more conservative in some, on some questions. You can see that in polling. But it's clear in that argument which side the media is taking. It, it likes these radical, aggressive, nationhood sort of sovereignty argument, it seems to me. Um, and, and in the end, it's, a, it's an argument over whether we have a treaty and sovereignty first or after. But there's mm. no doubt in, in the Greens' mind that they want it. And I think one worries about how many people in Labor, including Anthony Albanese, see the voice as a, 
a first step towards sovereignty, which, of course, is a whole new ball game. Yeah, that's interesting. Caroline, your thoughts? I, I actually found... Well, uh, to be honest, Amy Ramika's tweet, hilarious. <laughs> I mean, firstly, when... Did she tweet something similar when Marion Scrimger came out the other week and said, look, we need to worry about what's going on in Alice Springs before The Voice, and then everyone piled on her and she was back on Labor message by early in the afternoon. I'm not sure whether there was the same kind of concern for the view <laughs> of that particular First Nations person. Um, I actually thought um, Catherine Murphy's article in The Guardian was quite interesting, how she tried to play... Uh, um, Lydia leaving as a win for Albo because it's a it's a more um, central position on The Voice. The thing is, it might make The Voice a little bit easier. It is going to make every other piece of legislation p potentially more difficult because you might get the Greens and you might get Pocock. I mean, that's easy to get those two lumped together. Well, if you need to get Jackie Lambie or Pauline Hanson... To get all of them to agree to pass your piece of legislation, all of a sudden that's a whole different balancing act. So, um, mm. look, I, I feel like um, there, there was definitely part of it that was moving towards the radical part, but there was definitely part that's just trying to smooth over this whole thing to make sure that it doesn't look too bad for the government.